Hey there. I uh, just wanted to give you some quick tips on uh, kind of have how to have a little bit more success with air and address some of the issues I've seen with other people. So um, I am in the advanced script here, but this applies to standard as well. Uh, the things I'm going to talk about. But one of the big things, um, it's kind of small, it's kind of big, but one of the big things is um, really after we get a yes or maybe from the prospect, so meaning we have an opening line, we basically tell them why they're, we're calling, and in this particular script, it says, hey, it's Ashley from House Fox. You had spoken with one of our team members a while back about possibly selling your house. Do you remember that? So they're either going to say yes, no, I'm not interested in speaking with you right now. You can either quickly get off the phone, which we have some prompting in here to make sure she does get off the phone, or they're going to want to continue to speak with you. So if they want to continue to speak, then we just verify that um, we have the right address, or you might verify that um, some other way, or you could jump straight to this section here. Uh, and this is kind of the, this is kind of one of the things uh, I've been doing that's had the calls be way more successful and with people talking with the AI. And it's simply just telling people right up front that it is AI. And I think the problem is, you know, it is new technology. There is some lag. There can be some delays. It's usually not that bad. Uh, one thing to take note of is right now they are um, connected to ChatGPT on the back end for their information. Uh, so if ChatGPT is having a laggy day or bogged down by users, it can affect the calls because that's out of their... Um, because that's out of something that they can control, they have been on the last couple months training a new language model, and their hopes is to be able to completely get off ChatGPT servers, create their own servers that it's totally trained on that's just as intelligent as ChatGPT, and uh, then they can fully control all of the variables of the lag. So that's one part of the lag that they is out of their control right now, and uh, can fluctuate from day to day. But I've been doing tons of test calls with clients. The lag is not that bad. And simply just telling people, you know, this line, uh, I've, this is worded a lot of different ways. You could say, hey, in full transparency, I'm a very intelligent AI assistant, but you can speak with me just like a human. Uh, some people just like to say, I'm sorry, there's been a bit of a lag today on my line. Um, that one is okay, but sometimes it's still fooling people um, and they still think it's a human. The, 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 the line's just laggy. But the reason why I like telling people it's AI is because, number one, if you or I speak to this, we know we're talking with AI. So we listen to it to speak. We wait till it's done. And then we speak. 99% of the calls when you do test calls are going to be fantastic calls. Like they're going to go almost perfect every single time. And then when we do live calls with real people, we see lots of things happen that we didn't see when we tested. The reason is, is because as humans, we kind of talk over each other a lot and we interrupt each other. So when there's a lot of that going on, sometimes it can get in this back and forth, you know, like uh, 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 like each one tries to talk at the same time and then they stop and then they wait and then they talk at the same time and it just gets out of sync. Um, and, and that can become a problem. It doesn't happen a ton, but this has really helped that because once people know they're talking with AI, that it's intelligent, they can ask it questions, they just speak better to it. They have a better conversation, like if you or I were to do role play with it. Um, so then the next thing is, um, you know, our team is wanting to buy another house soon, love to set up a priority call. So you have to give it a reason to talk with AI. A lot of people will want to hang up when they know they're not talking with a human, but if they know they're getting a priority call set up, if they know that, you know, maybe you say, Hey, our team was busy at the moment, but the purpose of this call is to get, um, to skip the line. That's a really good one to use. We're going to, if you talk to me, you're going to skip the line and get um, a call booked sooner. Um, so be creative and think of some sort of incentive, like why should they stay on the phone and talk with it? It's not good enough to just to say it's AI, but then you have to give an incentive. As soon as you get past this, you know the best thing to do is to book an appointment right off the bat. Capture that information, capture you know the cold lead so that you can talk with them. Um, but then the second phase is asking permission to uh, ask them more questions, or to, uh, in this case, it would be, you know, do you have a couple more minutes for me to gather a few more details? That'd be awesome. Um, just a quick update. It would really help the next conversation go smooth and quick so we can quickly figure out the best offer we can make. So another incentive. Hey, if you give me two more minutes, 
this is going to really help us formulate the best offer for you. Um, this applies to every single industry. It doesn't matter what you're in. Ask them for a few more minutes to talk. Give them an incentive on what that's going to do to help them. If people continue on with the conversation, then you can you can uh, look at these transcripts or the calls, or if you're connected, go high level. You can um, actually score these um, through a scoring system and see who's taking the next steps to really validate like this is a warmer lead. It's not just a cold lead that uh, didn't get past the second stage. So it's like a two-step process um, and that really helps qualify the leads. So um, these these things have made a difference in my calls. They've helped. Um, some people like even saying on top of that, maybe another line saying, hey, sorry if you, there's a bit of a delay. I'm just taking notes. Um, you know, it's perfectly normal for the person on the other end to be taking notes with you uh, when they're talking with a new lead, collecting data that they didn't have. Uh, but sometimes we just don't think about that. Sometimes we don't think about, hey, you know, they could be taking notes. We just think the back and forth should be immediate. So it's okay to have a little bit of delay. It doesn't, um, it's, it doesn't, you know, ruin the call or anything like that. Now, a few other things. Um, um, Stepping step to the side, um, done talking about that. A couple other things we've had issues with is occasionally from time to time, uh, the agent will get asked a weird question by the prospect on the phone and it causes it to get off track, go off script, maybe say something totally different. Now, this is where we use advanced scripts. Um, we can put things in brackets. We can do. Uh, we can go up in the objectives, policies area and give it more rules to follow. Uh, but one thing I've done that I've been and success with is when creating the advanced scripts is sometimes you just have to put up guardrails. So if somebody uh, goes off topic, for example, and it's not about buying or selling a house, then I can put in a prompt that says, if they say anything on the call that's not related or doesn't sound like that they're interested in buying or selling a house, then just get them back on track to let them know that your job is this and you're unfortunately, you can't help them with that. Um, there's been times when um, I've heard agents go off on a tangent, like somebody saying they're having a bad day and then they like almost become their psychologist and start talking to them, you know, weird things about how they could help them have a better day or this or that. So putting up those guardrails in the advanced script has been able to help, um, whenever we hear it go off script to be, help it uh, stay on track more. So one out of a hundred times that happens though, in, in most scenarios, AI is already very good about sticking to the script. And that's one thing that I do love about it. Whereas uh, when I've used my human callers in the past, uh, you know, sometimes they can go off script way too much and uh, be thinking that they're building rapport and they're just not steering the conversation in the right direction. So um, that is a benefit of using the AI. Um, another thing I have seen uh, that has caused lag over here on the right hand side, uh, many people are playing with the new voices. Unfortunately, the newest ones the ones that don't see the original next to them, they, I've had them be a little bit more unstable. Um, I've been sticking to the ones that stay original and just waiting for these to become a little bit better. Now, I know a lot of people are really excited to use these new voices, keep testing them, keep trying them, but I always have lag on the new voices. I always have more weird things happen with the new voices. I've tested them over and over and over again, and I know for sure with consistency, I can say that they do mess up more. I'm not quite sure why, but that's something they're continually trying to make better. The original voices have been out the longest and they're the most stable and I have the most success with them uh, not messing up or not having as much lag, uh, just being more stable, staying on script better. So I um, have no idea what happens on the back end that would cause that, but um, if you're having lots of issues, I would also, I would also just switch back to the original voices. Um, I think it's a good idea to test them every so often try them, see what you think. Um, I, hopefully we get updates here in the near future of those getting better. So that's one thing you can try. Um, some other things that happen that go wrong with the script is when you start doing actions. Um, actions have been unstable in call action or um, even transferring the call. Um, I've been able to use some prompts to help those become more stable but they're also working on fixes to make that more user friendly. As of right now, those are kind of advanced features, um, probably need help with uh, a license holder like myself to do some advanced prompting to get that to work a little bit better. But if you just go in there and do it like it's supposed to be done, that would be great if it worked, but we're seeing 
uh, there are some issues with end call and uh, transfer call actions. So just be careful um, if you're having problems with that. Sometimes it'll end the call too soon or transfer the call too soon, not happen exactly when you want it. Um, I do have um, some other videos I've made and I've helped many people uh, get that consistently working. So it will work. Um, it just takes a, a bit of an expert to help with that as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, last thing I just want to talk about is the real power of air is being able to make a lot of calls really, really fast. So perfect example. I've told many people, I'm going to tell it again on this call. I was working with the client. He dropped 3000 calls. It took 15 minutes to make the calls. He, this was in real estate. He forgot to connect the property address. So I think it had 300 pickups out of 3000 calls, 300 people picked up. And for every single pickup, it said, I was calling to see if you would consider an offer at your property at none. It just said none because it didn't have the data. So because it didn't have the data, um, it, it said that to all those people. And, you know, most people look at it and be like, man, that's a complete flop. Like I just wasted all that money. So at the end, at the end of that campaign, it charged him $50 and he still got, um, it was either three or five customers, leads that were actually qualified leads that wanted to sell their house because it didn't matter that it messed up or it said none. Those people were truly motivated. At the end of the day, when you're competing with competition and everybody's doing cold calling, direct mail, Facebook advertising, if you have a list, a huge list, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, it doesn't matter, and this thing can call it in a day, and it's going to take your competition with VA cold callers, uh, real humans that take a month or many months or weeks, whatever it may be, to get through that list, and you can call them today and get to those low-hanging fruit motivated leads faster, that's where this thing becomes super powerful. Um, my client that dropped those 3,000 leads, you know, he's like, Gabe, I have a cold caller. It would have taken her at least a month to get through that, uh, which would which would be about $650 in the labor I pay her. And I got to these leads within 15 minutes. You know, of course, since then, he's connected the property address, right? He's going to continue to get better results. He's made the script better. So that's like worst case scenario. Um, I think people are trying to use this as replacing themselves, trying to fool people that it's a real human. I just think at this point in time, it's too new for that. And it's just a tool. It's a great tool to use. It can get to lead super quick. It can do follow-up, but just be honest with people. Let them know it's AI. They're going to be more patient. They're going to be more patient when they know it's lagging. They'll understand why. They'll talk to it correctly. Give them incentives on why to talk to it and just use it as a tool. Um, and if you keep that in mind, um, I've been having a ton of success with this thing and it's dirt cheap when you use it in those ways. So I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know.